Hello. What are the best and the worst cybersecurity careers for beginners? In this video, I'm going to go over the absolute worst, my F tier, and then I'm going to work my way up to the S tier, which are the best jobs for beginners. If you're trying to figure out what roles are entry level and which cybersecurity careers are more advanced, or just what careers exist, this is the video for you. This list largely comes from the NICE framework. And as you can see, there are 3 million jobs opened wide in cybersecurity, but the word cybersecurity is compromised of a lot of different roles. And the reason that there's 3 million is because they're lumping in a lot of IT jobs and also a lot of software jobs that were traditionally just known as IT jobs or software jobs. They are now cybersecurity jobs. The way I did this criteria is really, it's just based on my own experience in the field. It's also based on the, the level of difficulty of the job and landing the job, along with the frequency that job comes up. And so let's get started. The first one is a cryptographer. This is people who develop encryption systems and work including protocols, analyzing methods, and researching new techniques for different en encryption protocols. You might provide guidance on new cryptography coming out and algorithms and all of that. This is going on my F tier. Not great for beginners and really difficult to learn. Highly specialized. They don't really show up on job postings that much. And you have to have in-depth computer science knowledge. The next one on my list is a chief information security officer. It, these are the people in charge of the entire security organization and security posture. And it is a chief level position, executive level. Usually all of these people have more than 10 years of experience and tons of degrees and tons of certifications. This is going on my F tier. The next one on my list is a cloud security engineer. A lot of people are super interested in the cloud and cloud security. And I have been digging deep into the cloud. You're going to be responsible with the security aspect is securing cloud. And then you may be automating security controls, data and processes. You could also be reviewing and auditing infrastructure to make sure that they're in line with the company policies and then the, the government privacy laws. Put this role is difficult, very difficult, because you need to not only know cloud basics, you need to know security, and you also need to know a little bit of coding in Terraform. So a lot of security positions do need automation because you need to know so much, this is going on the F tier. Not great for beginners. The next one on my list is a security software developer. A lot of software developers actually don't know security for software. Security has often just been a second thought. And so there's a huge gap of knowledge for security with software developers. They usually develop and make sure that their code is safe. And if it's not, you can just deploy a web application firewall. Totally just kidding. Because of this level of difficulty and needing to know code in depth, this is going on my F tier. The next role is a security architect. You're designing the network and computer security, and you may include creating the frameworks, making sure that the frameworks match with business and integrating security into different IT projects. This is not a position well suited for beginners, but it's not as difficult as say becoming a CISO or a cloud security engineer, depending on the company. And so this is going in my D tier. The next one is a security auditor. This falls under governance, risk and compliance. And you're basically just going to be auditing systems, making sure that they're in compliance with different rules, laws, regulations that the governments and companies have in this. You might need a either a degree or certifications and or experience to get this because usually these positions are at large bureaucratic organizations. And large bureaucratic organizations like banks and financial and health and government, they absolutely love degrees. If you don't have a degree for this position, it can be a little bit harder to land as a beginner. That is why it's going on my D tier. The next 
cybersecurity career on my list is a security engineer. These people develop and implement IT security solutions, and this is going to be different for every security engineer position. I worked specifically with web application firewalls for a solid two years, but you could be doing a number of things underneath this title, but I can guarantee you it's gonna be specialized and probably this requires specialized skills and experience. There's a, a fair amount of these positions. It's gonna be so varied per company on what those skills are needed. This is going on my C tier. It's in the middle in terms of the difficulty level of landing. If you're a beginner, it's not the best place to start, but if you're in IT, you could definitely up level to a security engineer position. The next one on my list is a security consultant. So these people are basically trying to convince companies of their solution or their advice on what to do. They may even do different assessments and assist with implementations. If you are great at talking and then also just making things up on the fly. This is a great career for you. You can start here as a beginner. You're going to require a little bit of experience and a specialized skill. Maybe the company will teach you though. If you have a degree, it's a lot easier to land this or certifications to land this as a beginner. This is going in my C tier. The next one on my list is an information system security officer or ISSO. This is super popular in large bureaucratic. I actually have this position. You just do a lot of paperwork <laughs> and you oversee a lot of the security programs and then make sure exceptions are putting in place and making sure the documentation is in place and the audits are good to go. This is a little bit difficult for beginners to land, not impossible. Most ISSOs that I know have 20 years of experience in the military or something of that sort. This is going in my C tier. The next cybersecurity career on my list is an incident responder. These are the people who are the first responders to a breach. They're actively investigating breaches, coordinating response and system recovery. So this is not so much an entry level role. This are, these are like tier two, tier three people that are investigating. Most people don't start out as an incident responder, but they move up to an incident responder from a lower level security job. It's suitable for those with some experience and there's tons of these jobs. And so it's going on my C tier. You can definitely get there within one to two years of experience. The next one is a penetration tester. This is suitable for some people with experiences, tons of different postings. You're going to try to find vulnerabilities within people's networks and systems by actually trying to hack into their system totally legally. This is what everybody is interested in. The next cybersecurity career on my list is a forensics computer analyst. These people analyze digital evidence and cyber crimes. This includes collecting data, examining it for clues and reporting findings. This is super popular at law enforcement agencies and for the state governments. This is usually also goes along at private sector with incident response and forensic analysis. It can be a brutal job because sometimes you have to look at things that maybe you don't really want to look at on people's computers because you are collecting evidence. It is a moderately popular job. I wouldn't say it's the easiest to get because oftentimes these are at the state and the state loves degrees. And also the state has tons of police officers that also want to move into a tech, a cush tech job, like a forensic analyst. They are entry level, but they can be difficult to get. And so it's going on my B tier. The next one on my list is a compliance analyst. You're ensuring that security policies comply with the different standards that exist. This includes reviewing policies, conducting reports, and then also doing compliance 
audit. This falls under governance, risk, and compliance, and really popular at large organizations. It's moderately suited for beginners, but there's tons of compliance analyst positions. Nobody really wants to do compliance in IT. If you're someone who likes compliance, this is great. It's going on my A tier. The next one on my list is Identity Access Management or IAM Analyst. These people are in charge of ensuring people have the right permissions for their level in the organization. I once worked at an organization where <laughs> there was no IAM analyst and basically you could get to almost anyone's folder pretty easily and then no one was really checking to make sure that permissions were evoked when people left the company. It was a huge mess. It's a really important job. You don't want the wrong people accessing the wrong files. <laughs> This is going to become more and more important as we move to the cloud because identity access management is the new perimeter. This will be a hot field in the future. Get ahead of it while nobody knows about it. And so this is going in the A tier. The next one on my list is a governance, risk, and compliance analyst. These people focus on governance, risk, and compliance. This includes doing risk assessments, policy development, and ensuring regulatory requirements. So this one is definitely beginner level, but it falls into that trap that a lot of large companies have GRC analysts and large companies love degrees. Now, if you're willing to work for a smaller company and they have positions, that's always an option. And so this cybersecurity career is going on my A tier. The next cybersecurity career is the Security Operations Center or SOC Analyst. These monitor system activities, they go through logs, they really try to find is this a true positive, is this a false positive. They investigate security alerts and respond to incidences. These people are the first line of defense for cybersecurity team. This to me is a entry level role. And so it's going on my S tier. This is highly suitable for beginners and there's a good amount of SOC analyst jobs. If you have IT experience, I suggest not going for a SOC analyst position and going for maybe more of an engineer position or ones on like the D or C tier. The next position on my list is a network and system security administrator. In the past, this has just been the IT department that does patching and computers. And, but since the word cybersecurity has gotten so popular, I've seen this emerge. Now you'll see like a network security administrator when it used to be a network administrator. I think maybe they're just trying to get more applicants and then they can just pay you less because everybody wants to work in cybersecurity now. So you'll just take whatever, basically. You're going to do things like patching computers or running vulnerability scans. Maybe you'll be doing basic firewall stuff or this is going on my S tier. The next one is an information security analyst. I think of as governance, risk and compliance, and usually they're part of the vulnerability management team and they do vulnerability assessments. Also, they do risk assessments and report on the security posture. Highly dependent. I think this is great for beginners. If you go through any job postings, it's gonna say eight years of experience or something like that, but I don't really think that's necessary. It does kind of fall underneath governance, risk and compliance and the level, the amount of training you need to land that job, I don't really think is that high. I'm putting it on my S tier for that reason. Now hiring managers might disagree with me, but I think that is a S tier. Some things to keep in mind when I go through these is job titles are vary from company to company. A security analyst won't always do the same things at each company. Also, I am launching a cybersecurity resume challenge. I do have that link below in the description. You can pre-order it at a severely discounted price. I'm going to walk through a lot of Security Plus concepts along with how to think about things as someone who works in security. Make sure to check that out below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.